we're teaching is looking at the future fight. We have to ensure that we're preparing our warriors to be able to survive, be able to evade, capture, be able to resist, be able to either escape or be returned with honor. Today, we are out on the drop zone with our parachuting flight and they're executing some jumps as part of our uh, emergency parachute instructor course, which is teaching uh, the SEER specialists how they would instruct students going through the emergency parachuting course of the actions that they need well once they have to either eject or bail out of an aircraft. This is ordered. This is certified that the Air Force Commendation Medal has been awarded to Staff Sergeant Darren P. Toby Anson. Being the commander of the 22nd Training Squadron, our main mission is to develop SEER specialists, as well as provide what the Air Force refers to as high risk of isolation personnel. The Air Force has specific categories such as air crew, or a lot of our medics before they'll deploy will go through the program, but mostly who the Air Force considers high risk of isolation. Our battlefield airmen, or what we're now referring to as our special warfare airmen, uh, so the Air Force is kind of ground force and those that could be put in those situations in which in the training is most likely to be used. So SEER is, constitutes survival, evasion, resistance, escape. So that's S-E-R-E. -E. The Department of Defense has established what the joint training standards are for SEER training. Each service is then charged with what they need to add on for their training. The Air Force is the only service that provides dedicated SEER specialists within the Department of Defense. The minute your feet touch the ground, you look, you look away from the direction of travel. Does that make sense? I love the teaching aspect of SEER. You're ultimately providing the knowledge and tools to an individual who maybe was raised in a city and never been outside that city before joining the Armed Forces and you're giving them the tools and, and the ability to go and survive anywhere in the world should they need to. Combat survival training is what we refer to it. We put through about 4,200 students per year. We try to provide a experiential experience for them, trying to be as realistic as possible. The first part of it, they'll do a little bit of academics and then they'll go out into the Colville National Forest and they'll go up there for about five days where the SEER instructor is teaching them how to survive in the different kinds of climates. They're teaching principles and they're trying to relate those principles to the different types of biomes that they could encounter or even the different types of geographic combatant commands on where they would or possibly be operating. You do not have to be an outdoorsy kid. You do not have to have uh, been outside all your life. You can come from the city and come in here and we will teach you everything you need to know from lighting a fire to cutting down a tree, to sharpening your axes, your knives, things like that. Anyone can learn what we do. That's the whole point of our job is to teach it to people who don't know how to do it yet. And then on top of our 19 day program that we run, uh, we also do parachuting water survival, and then we do underwater egress training. And then we also have some internal courses that we run, one of them being the emergency parachute course. My student instructors in my squadron are learning how to teach emergency parachuting to the students going through the course. Whether you're bailing out of the aircraft or you're ejecting out of the aircraft, how you would do that. So it's kind of combined with emergency parachuting and then they throw on the uh, water survival training to emergency parachuting. The underwater egress training for the helicopter, they call it the dunker, and it goes underwater and it flips upside down and you wear blackout goggles and you have to be able to egress out of the helicopter under conditions that are you know, less than ideal. One of the missions of the SEER specialists is to prepare these warriors to go to battle. You know, we're asking new people in the military that swore on this oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States because it's their life that we're talking about and ensuring that they're prepared and that they can survive and that they you know, ultimately return with honors. I can't say enough about the pride that these guys have and, and the fact that everything they do on a daily basis is a selfless act because they are doing preparation for other people to be able to serve in the capacity that the, the Air Force has had for them. And so to work with individuals who are only in the Air Force to ensure that other people 
are successful and to be able to serve them and to be able to come to work every day is truly amazing.